So welcome everybody. My name is Christoph Rudner. I am the uh, co-founder and CEO of Scandit. We are a uh, Swiss-based company uh, that was founded by entrepreneurs of um, MIT and ETH Zurich back in 2009. We're based in Zurich, Switzerland with uh, presences in San Francisco and Boston. And um, we're, so what, what we do is we're in the field of mobile product interaction. We have around 5,000 licensees around the globe in more than 80 countries and are the uh, preferred technology provider of GS1, which is the uh, global barcode standardization organization. So that's a little bit about our background. So what do we actually do? What are our products? We um, have basically three products. The first one is a barcode scanner SDK which is the fastest and most reliable mobile barcode scanning technology around that scans barcodes from any angle uh, without autofocus on bad surfaces, bad lighting, and so on. So it's a really reliable technology uh, with many years of research uh, at those um, universities behind. And it supports Android, iOS, Windows Phone 8, Soon, Symbian, uh, and we also have plugins for PhoneGap and Titanium for those who are more into cross-platform development. Then we also have a product API that lets you retrieve information on a product based on its barcode, the barcode number. So you can request nutritional information, you can request um, allergen information, and so on. So if you have an app, if you're an app developer who is interested in that kind of information, you can get that from us too. And we have Scanalytics, which is a product, a web-based platform that lets you analyze where your users, the app users, actually scan products, what kind of products they scan, what product categories, if it's more um, electronics, for example, more groceries, more beverages, and so on. And it also lets you uh, keep track of where those scans actually take place, whether that is in a retail environment, in an actual store, or at home, which is uh, fairly important for many use cases, and many more analytics features around barcode scanning. Um, our customers include a number of uh, well-known names, I'm not going into details here, but um, today I'm going to talk about business processes in enterprises and Android and how Android is changing those. So what we have seen in the recent years is basically two trends. The first trend is mobile business. So the uh, mobile phones and the, the uh, availability of mobile phones has dramatically changed the way how business is done in many areas. For example, a retailer these days has to be aware that people in a store generally have internet connectivity available and they're going to compare prices, they're going to check products online, can they get them cheaper elsewhere, um, what do, they, what do they, uh, these products contain, are there any problematic substances in it, are there any health aspects, uh, ethical aspects to uh, be considered, and so on. Price comparison is a big issue, then coupons, for example. Um, many people actually retrieve mobile coupons on their phones, go to a store, show them there to re uh, receive a discount. Uh, payment is moving to the mobile phone, and so on. But all those developments are mostly limited to the uh, consumer side of things. So. It is the interaction between a business and its customers that has seen the most dramatic changes in the past few years. Not so much in the enterprise inside. At the same time, we have seen a second trend, which is the uh, consumerization of the enterprise. Um, employees more and more tend to use services, online services that are actually provided uh, from outside suppliers. And they do so without necessarily coordinating with other people inside the organization. So they use Dropbox to quickly share files. They sometimes even send emails, corporate emails with Gmail. They keep their notes in a service like Evernote. They use Skype for quick conference calls and so on. So many products that were originally developed with the end user in mind have 
slowly moved and found their way into the enterprise, which of course poses a lot of security questions and, uh, and, and governance issues for businesses. But these, this development, the, the uh, consumerization of the enterprise, has one important um, implication. The consumerization changes the expectations that employees have. When in the future they were happy with um, email programs like uh, Microsoft Outlook and Lotus Notes and whatever, um, that is just not enough en uh, anymore. The usability that is provided by such solutions is not what people expect those days. Because Dropbox, Gmail, Evernote, and so on, they all provide a really, really great user experience, stylish user interfaces, e easy usability, available, um, they are usable from anywhere, and so on. And that is the kind of experience that people are more and more expecting inside the enterprise as well. And this trend does not just uh, does not stop with hardware and with software. You can also observe it um, with hardware. Bring your own device is a big issue here. Um, people have great devices, and they want to use them, not just personally, but they want to take them to work, as we heard in the uh, previous talk. Uh, the iPad has been a bit of a game changer in this domain. Now, it gets really interesting when we look at business processes and what kind of devices that have been used so far in this domain. So when you look at a business process such as a library checkout or a payment, uh, accepting a payment in a retail store, you see that in the past there were dedicated devices that were used for, for such, um, such processes. Now those devices, they don't generally provide a very good user experience and naturally people are wondering, well, why does it have to be like that? Why do we have these clumsy, ugly devices where I have to read the text on that green display? Why can't there be just a, a nice device like I use it every day at home? An iPad, an uh, Android tablet. So that is actually where Android comes in and um, the advantage of using Android, uh, an Android-based um, device, instead of custom hardware like in the past, like that clunky barcode scanner that you see on the left, are obvious. The first thing is that they make business processes available to everyone. Because in the past, you had a few devices in an enterprise, and they had to be shared by different users. They were centralized, and everyone had to use those that were provided. Now, if we think of Android, then everyone has such a device in their pockets and you can actually support the business process on those devices that are everywhere, which makes everyone, um, which renders everyone able to actually access the business process. Another advantage is that you can let people participate in a business process even if it is not actually their core task, even if they do it only once a week. Because before, that was not economically feasible. You couldn't distribute a dedicated hardware scanner, for example, to everyone who would just need it once a week. Now, with an Android-based device that can read barcodes, NFC tags, um, just access the business process, this is now possible. Also, decentralized use, I talked about that before. You don't need to have a single device that is shared by several people. And then, of course, the other thing that um, uh, has something to do with the consumerization, these new devices built on modern operating systems and their uh, great user interfaces provide a much, much better user experience than, let's say, that uh, barcode scanner there on the left. Now, the question is, of course, um, what we had in the past were dedicated devices. They served a single purpose, and you would assume that um, they did the task really, really well, and it is kind of hard to do the same thing with a general purpose device like an Android phone. So the technology might be a little bit of a challenge here. So my background is in visual uh, image recognition, and so I'm mostly gonna, gonna use this as an example. And I would just like to show you as an example what the challenges are there. Um, if you have a barcode and you want to read that with a mobile phone, 
That is not a very difficult task if you have a barcode like, like the one that you can see there. It is totally sharp, not blurry, easy to decode. But in reality, things are a little bit different. Um, you often have cameras without autofocus, especially on the Android platform, that is um, very common because you have lower priced devices there that do not have um, very sophisticated hardware. And then you actually end up with a image like this one, which is much, much harder to decode. Other problems are that even when you do have autofocus, the focus point might not be in the, wrong, in the right place. In this example, the background is in focus, the foreground is not. So this is very difficult to decode. Um, then you have the problem that the autofocus needs some time to actually trigger, to actually make the image sharp. Um, on an iPhone uh, 4S, for example, it takes 1.3 seconds for the autofocus to actually make the image sharp. And until then, it is a really, really hard task to decode such a barcode. So it is a tricky thing to do that with a mobile phone and to provide the same user experience that you would expect from dedicated hardware devices. Here are more problems. Packaging, for example, you have transparent backgrounds, you have crumpled surfaces, you have non-uniform backgrounds, very thin barcodes, you have glare from lighting, and you have very tiny codes. I'm, I want to quickly show you a video that illustrates the kind of performance that we can actually achieve today on generic, non-custom Android hardware in this domain. All right, so let me now briefly talk about five use cases where you can use these such technology to actually change internal business processes and make them available on Android devices to everyone in an enterprise and not just to a few select people who are equipped with dedicated devices. So the first example is going to be procurement. Um, Typically, small enterprises these days, when they order goods from their suppliers, they go to their storerooms, they have a paper-based list, they check how many items that are left, where they're running low in stock, they write down the number of items that they want to order, they take back the lists to um, a desktop PC, go to an online store, enter the number of items they want to order, and submit the order. Then, when the shipment arrives back, um, they check the completeness of the shipment, again, totally manually, often with pen, paper, and Excel lists. So that's how small businesses operate today. Of course, not the larger ones, but the smaller ones, that's the reality there. Now, with an Android device, you can totally change that. You can make it much, much easier. You can have the retail buyer or manager place uh, the order directly on the Android phone. Uh, the uh, buyer can go through the store, um, scan barcodes of products that are missing, um, enter the quantity and directly submit the order there. The product vendor can use the same technology when assembling an order and then when the uh, shipment actually arrives, uh, again, the uh, buyer can check completeness by simply scanning a barcode and not using paper-based lists. 
Here's an example application that does exactly that. Winterhalter and Fenno is um, a major supplier of electrical goods. Um, they're a wholesaler and they have a mobile app for Android and iOS that does exactly that. You scan a barcode, you enter the quantity, and their customers can easily, easily assemble shopping carts like that. So the value proposition of this solution is that the uh, order process can be streamlined significantly. Ordering can be decentralized. Everyone can order directly from their phones. There's no need to um, collect the uh, order sheets in, in one central place. Uh, and from a competitive perspective, this of course improves product availability for uh, a buyer and it also reduces human errors. Naturally, um, this also reduces hardware costs because if you think that you, the alternative would be to buy a dedicated hardware scanner, that's um, of course much, much more expensive than software. The uh, second example here would be the uh, self-checkout process. Um, checkout in retail stores, grocery stores, these days um, is mostly just done manually. There's someone sitting there and taking your products and so on, especially in, in small places. This is um, the only way that, uh, that how, how this can be uh, economically efficiently be done. In larger stores, um, they, uh, stores have started to roll out fixed checkout stations, like you can see on the right there. Uh, where you as a customer yourself scan the products and um, do the checkout process, or you have these portable dedicated hardware devices on shopping carts, for example, like on the left-hand side. But again, these technology solutions, they're not really cheap and you can only roll them out in larger stores. The alternative, of course, is to use um, software for a mobile phone or a tablet that can be installed on a customer device which means that the store itself does not have to provide any hardware. The uh, consumer scans items as they're placed in the shopping cart. A uh, consumer can scan a coupon with promotional discount, for example. They can scan their loyalty, sc loyalty cards of the store or show the digital version that they have in their wallet, in their mobile wallet. They proceed to a checkout station where they scan a barcode from a mobile kiosk uh, complete the payment, receive a QR code with a receipt, proceed to the exit, can show the receipt there and the gate opens. So this is how this is implemented in a few innovative stores uh, around the world. Um, here is an example solution um, by QThrough, a US-based company that uses our technology to do exactly that. It's been rolled out uh, nationwide in the US uh, to facilitate self-checkout on Android and, and uh, iOS devices. The value proposi proposition here is of course that checkout time is significantly re reduced. You do not have to stand in line and wait. Um, you can use such a solution to help your customers actually discover products, local discovery. If you don't know where that soup is that you actually want to buy, you can use the same app for that. You can, as a store, provide personalized offers to your customers based on what they have just placed in their shopping cart. You can offer product recommendations, targeted deals, and promotions also. There's a lot of opportunity for cross-selling and upselling from a um, retailer's uh, point of view. And from a competitive perspective, it is important for many of our custom customers that they are actually perceived as the innovator in the domain by both their customers as well as their competitors. Um, let's proceed to the next example, mobile ticketing. In uh, ticketing, the traditional approach is very, very different, different among different domains. You have traditional paper-based uh, tickets like on the right-hand side at the bottom. You have lists, paper, you have, you have Excel lists uh, where, where your name uh, is listed and checked. You have handheld scanners to check printed tickets. And you have more advanced systems like that star ticket terminal there that contain barcode scanners. But ob obviously they're clunky, they're expensive, they're often offline, which does not allow you to really check double spending of a ticket, for example. Many handheld devices have even worse battery life than you see in today's smartphones. 
And user interfaces are extremely basic in, in many of uh, those solutions. The basic thing, the basic aspects that you want to do in ticketing is you want to distribute tickets and you want to verify tickets. And on both sides of, of uh, that problem, uh, Android-based device is actually a pretty neat solution. So you have probably seen this, uh, very basic. The ticket distributor creates a ticket. It gets distributed directly on a mobile phone. And on the other side, you have the event staff that uses their phone to scan a barcode and verify whether a ticket is valid and the person can be admitted to the event. An example solution here is um, Fatsoma, a ticketing application in the US. Um, the uh, ticket checker, the person who checks the tickets, um, can select the event, can see who has checked in, and can validate tickets by scanning the barcode. The value proposition for such a ticketing solution is that, of course, again, small event organizers can use sophisticated technology. They do not really have any alternative. Traditionally, they have used just pen and paper, um, distributed some paper-based ticket. Um, a real scanning solution like that star, star ticket scanner before that we saw would be simply too expensive. You can have decentralized event management. You can have uh, people buying tickets last minute because everything is online. You do not have to synchronize lists, uh, print lists, and anything like that. Of course, the solution is much more convenient for your guests at an event. They can store and show tickets on a device that they carry with them all the time anyway last minute sales, and uh, you can also deploy over the air updates of your solution. You do not have to collect all the handheld devices from all the ticketing checking points that you might have. Um, you can simply download a new version of your, your app to the Android phone. Now let's look at point of sale as a fourth example. At the point of sale, um, traditionally, you have these highly complex systems, like you can see on the left, with many peripheral devices that are error prone, uh, that are used to scan barcodes, to total the cost, to accept the payment. And many of these systems are simply too heavyweight for small retailers, individual retailers, because the hardware costs are too expensive. And they have to have agreement with payment processors, which are really a pain to, to reach and in, involve a lot of bureaucracy. So this is why many new payment uh, or, or point of sale systems have arrived, such as Square, for example, where you have a cashier that uses a tablet with a hardware dongle. You use the tablet's integrated camera to scan barcodes to total the costs and use the dongle to then scan your customer's credit card and uh, accept the payment, all within one single solution. An uh, example of, of such a solution would be Sing Checkout, which is available for Android and iOS. They use um, our scanned SDK to scan the barcodes. They have replaced the receipt printer with email or text message receipts. They basically did away with all the uh, uh, peripheral devices. The mouse was replaced by the touch screen, the scan gun replaced by the camera-based scanner, and the credit card terminal is replaced by a dongle. Now, in this domain, um, credit card reading is another interesting field um, because the hardware dongle in solutions like Square is still maybe a little bit clumsy. It would be nicer if you could actually visually decode the uh, credit card by simply placing it in front of the camera. And let's quickly look at a video here. Uh, this is another solution that we have built. Uh, it scans credit, credit cards, decodes the number and the name directly on the mobile phone. There is no server communication involved whatsoever. You simply place the card in front of the camera and it decodes the uh, credit card number with OCR technology. This is a pretty hard problem because you have reflections on the card. The surfaces are often very reflective. You have in the next card, the green one, a hologram that is extremely reflective. The font, the number, the credit card number actually goes into that hologram on the right hand side, which makes it really, really tricky to decode that card. But we think this is a really, really great example how even 
that hardware dongle can be replaced by simply using the integrated camera. You place the, the card in front of the camera and you can accept the payment that way. So the value proposition is, of course, again, um, to speed up the checkout process, improve uh, customer experience. And uh, you can use a familiar user, um, a familiar user interface uh, from Android devices that is, of course, much nicer and, than existing systems. Now, the last example that I would like to show you is parts tracking. This is actually a very interesting example, and we're really excited about that. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell names in this case, but this is a solution that we implemented with a global leading hardware manufacturer that needs to track hardware parts across the entire organization. You can see those hardware parts on the right-hand side. You have very tiny parts, even smaller ones, much smaller ones than the ones that you can see here. And what they do is they print code 39 or data matrix barcodes on those parts. And the goal is to enable all 10,000 technical employees in the organization to participate in the quality assurance process. So the idea is that whenever someone receives a part, they scan it so you can keep track of who has that part who has touched it last, you can easily access specifications of that part, and if you find something is wrong with that part, you can file a report and request a change directly on, uh, by interacting with that part. So in the past, they did this in, with two approaches. The first approach was with a dedicated hardware-based uh, handheld scanner. But the problem with that is, as before, that only a few people could, could use it. Now, this organization has really high QA standards, and their goal was that everyone could actually um, file, um, file bug requests, um, bug reports, and so on. So that was not a good solution for them. And the other approach was to use the desktop web-based solution, that if you find something that you want to report, you go, you log in to, to the web solution, punch in the number that you read from there, and file the report. But of course, this is uh, very, very tedious, and compliance is certainly not that high if you do it that way. So we implemented that um, on uh, a mobile phone with our scanned barcode scanning SDK. People can identify parts, access specification, see who has used it last, who has uh, filed other reports, logs, and so on. The uh, solution that they used was really tiny 4x4 four four millimeter, millimeter data matrix codes that were printed on the devices, sometimes even uh, printed with laser into the uh, metal cases of certain parts. Um, and um, the benefits are, of course, that, um, the, um, that, that QA was improved significantly because everyone in the uh, organization could, could use their own phone to access data and not just a few select people with dedicated hardware devices. This is a much cheaper solution than buying more hardware scanners. And with that, uh, it has helped that organization to really improve their QA process. The Value proposition of such an approach is that you can leverage the existing, existing device environment and bring your own devices that are available in an organization. You can enable occasional scanning. Um, you can create one point of access to all parts information. Simply scan it, look it up on the mobile phone. And uh, for that organization, it has really led to significant improvements in QA over their competitors. And it, of course, reduced friction during production, testing, and distribution of parts. All those different steps um, are more tightly integrated uh, with this solution. And with that, I come to the conclusion of my talk. Um, we have seen that Android is a great platform. There are great devices, tablets, and mobile phones that bring changes to well-established business processes. Um, the most important change is that sophisticated process support is not just available to big organizations, not just to people who use whose job it is to do that on a daily basis, but also small organizations can use those much 
much more inexpensive devices to access sophisticated business processes. Devices are also less complex than uh, systems that are integrating different parts. You just have one single mobile phone, one single tablet, with, of course, a great user experience that does not compare at all with what people are used from dedicated hardware so far. Thank you very much for your attention. Of course, one, th one last thing, we have a community edition of our barcode scanning SDK that you can download for free. Use it in your app if you are in the uh, barcode scanning business and want to try that out. Thank you very much.